previously on Lost. Hello, um, this is Roy. I'm a tenant here at Cove. Mm-hmm. And I just have a question about the... Do you know anything about the hatch underneath the apartment? The what? I'm sorry? Oh, um, well, I pulled up all my carpet and removed some floorboards in my apartment. And uh, I found a hatch underneath that leads down into another room. I, I have no idea. Oh, um, you don't know anything about what, it? What do you it, mean a hatch? Um, well, it was a metal hatch. Uh, I had to blow open the top part, and there's a ladder that goes down about 50 feet. And then there's a room down there. And I, I just, I don't know. Do I, I was wondering if I get to use this extra room, you know, like more square. What apartment number are you? Whoa, okay. Uh, I'm in 416. Okay, at Cove. Correct, yeah. And you're saying that you put up the rugs? Yeah, I pulled up all the carpets because there was a lot of urine in them. But then I started, pull- okay. I started pulling up floorboards, too. Did you get permission to do that? Well, I, I, I know you guys wouldn't want, you know, urine in your carpets. All right, give me a minute, sir. Okay. Important to us. Please hold the line, and we will be right with you. Thank you for holding. This is Cheryl. Hey, Gerald. I, it's Cheryl. I'm sorry. There. Oh, okay. You know, can I get a telephone number from you? There's a very, very bad echo, and I can't hear anything. Oh, I, I think it's... I, I can't be called back at this number, and I, I'm in the hatch right now underneath the apartment building. So I think that's, I think that's what the echo is. Oh, Okay. Um, what's your apartment number? I'll send the maintenance person open. Oh, well, I'm not in the apartment. I'm actually in the hatch underneath the apartment right now. I'm in 416, though. Number 416. Okay. Yep. Um, if you could please and vacate the hatch so that you're only in your apartment, we would appreciate that. Oh, well, it's, um, it's going to take a while. I have no while. idea how safe the area that you've crawled into is. Oh, no, it's, um, it's safe. But I've, sir, but you shouldn't be in anywhere but the space that's considered the apartment. Well, this is in the apartment, technically. I mean, it's, it's in the hallway. Well, technically... You vacated the apartment and gone into a hat. So if you could yeah, please go back into but, the apartment alone, I will send over maintenance right now. Okay, well, don't send them right now because it's going to take a while. It's, it takes like 30 minutes to crawl up this hatch. It's 50 feet under the ground. That's like a tall building. Sure. Should I call the police right now? I don't understand no, why no. you've crawled through a hat. Well, because it's, it's in the hallway of my apartment. I pulled up the carpet and the floorboards and there's a hatch underneath. And there's actually a, a man that lives down there. And I didn't know if he Sir, was... I'm going to call the police right now. Thank you. No, don't call the police, you idiot. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is this the police department? Yes, yes. What's your emergency, ma'am? Yes, hi. I need a police officer uh, at one. Okay, just so you... Just, 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 ma- ma'am, just so you know, this call's being recorded. That's what the beeping's about. Okay. All right, all right. So, um, what's, what's the emergency, ma'am? What's the problem? I... I have a resident who claims that they um, go under the rug and they put a hatch and they're building a hole. Say, Bu- building a hole. Hi, this is Lorraine. I'm the assistant manager of the Cove. Oh, hello, Ra- hello, Lorraine. That that was Gerald. No. Gerald that I was talking to. No, Mary Lou. Oh, Mary Lou. Uh, we okay. have a re- and restroom's on his way down to the office right now. He claims that he pulled up his carpet and found a hatch in the floor. Who, who, who's, thi- who, who's this, a resident? A resident. Okay. He claims there's a hatch in the floor. He went through the hatch. There's an underground tunnel that went 50 feet underground. Oh. And when he got to the end of it, there are people living in it. We've had and this before. He, he, yeah. There, there's people living underneath the apartment, and like transients or something? No, uh, it's obviously psychotic. Psychotic? There are no hatches. It, it's got to be. There's no hatches in the floor. There's no 50-foot tunnel under any apartment. Well, this it, is an apartment community. Well, well, how do you know that, though? I mean, have you inspected every inch of the under, underneath the apartments? A 50-foot tunnel under an apartment? Well, you never know. I mean, crazier things have happened. Um, well, when the carpet would have been put down, somebody would have been aware of it. I mean, okay. we have 336 units, and I've never had anybody say they went into a hatch in the foundation of the building, traveled through a 50-foot tunnel, and there are people living in there. Ma'am, have you been drinking? 
sir, who is is this the police department? Yes, I'm with the police department, but this sounds crazy, and it sounds like you're making a prank call to 911. No, sir, I'm telling you, we need assistance here. He just spoke with our property manager. He's on his way down here to the office, and we believe the man is either on medication, is not taking it, or is mentally unstable. So we would like a police officer here at the property in case there is an incident. Okay, so... This is not a prank call. So the man underneath the apartment in the hatch, is he armed? I have no idea. We got a call from a resident telling us that he just pulled up the carpet in his apartment. Ma'am, there is a ma'am, hatch you, can in the s- cement you, you need to stop yelling at me. I'm the police, and I don't need to be yelled at. I mean, just calm your tits and, and just tell me the story. Just, just... I mean, have you been drinking... Because uh, this sounds crazy. Sir, can, sir, can I have your name? This is Tackleberry, Officer Tackleberry. Officer Tackleberry, I am not drinking. I am the assistant manager at S- Cove. I am not raising my voice. I have somebody sitting oh, right here beside me. You're, you're raising I your voice right hallucin- now. Sir, I am not hallucinating. We're asking for police assistance because we believe that one of our residents... What you're gonna He's get? What, what, you know what you're gonna get? You're gonna get a weekend in jail for prank calls. How would you like that? Oh, sir, Tackleberry, can I speak with your superior, please? Because this is not a prank call, sir. <sighs> yeah, let, let me get. Let me get. Uh, is let, your line being recorded? Oh yeah, everything's being recorded. Oh, absolutely. So, Thank so, you. Thank you. So you know we have all this I'm, entire thing I'm on recording. Get a weekend jail for a prank call. And and we can send this to your psychiatrist, ma'am, if that's what you, if that's the way you want to be. Okay, are you there? Yeah, it sounds like you're in a tunnel. I put you on a speaker, so now I have witnesses, sir. Are you in this the hatch? This is not a call. Are, are you in this, this alleged is, hatch? This is called the parking community, and we're asking for police assistance. Okay. Our, our police assistance with your psychotic episode? Is that what you need? Hey, sir, is this the police? Did you dial 911? No, I called city. So, so for is this the police department that we're speaking to, sir? Yes, yes. This the, I'm officer okay. officer Tackleberry. We have we have a resident that we must enter, and we don't want to get disgusting. stopped by some manic resident. So we would like some assistance, please. You, you need assistance talking to a resident? Like, don't you know how to do that yourself? Like, sir, would you like me to walk through that door and get shot and have my desk be on your conscience? Did he we say he like was? Did he say he was going to shoot department. you? I think you're paranoid because of the drugs you've been taking. Sir, we, we're working in an office right now. We are the management office. Well, Officer Tackleberry, put your superior on the phone, please. I, 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 let, me get, let me get Officer Hightower just a minute. Oh, Roy Gerbel wants you oh so bad. You're not the only call he's ever had. And if he says he's gonna call on you, don't you know it's just the snowplow show? Cactus. So take the call from Roy Gerbel. Pick up that phone. He's on the air with the snowplow show. Pick up Roy Gerbell on The Snowplow Show. Cactus. 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 Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Snowplow Show. This is episode 753, and today is April 22nd, 2022. This show is brought to you by I Regret Jumping, Colby C, Teen Wolf Jesus, Mike B, and Climatiz. They support the show on patreon.com slash phone losers, just like I'm sure everybody else who's listening does. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, prank calls, they sure are fun to listen to, but what if I could listen to them on some outdated media so that I'd have to inconvenience myself just to listen to prank calls? Well, guess what, everybody? Is this the perfect year for you? Because there are now three prank call CDs out, two of them involving me, one of them involving King Richard and his prank call show called Another Prank Call Show, and two of them partially involving Vista Blue the band that makes a lot of prank call music for us all. If you're interested in any of these three CDs, then I will put links in the show notes to all of them. There's also band camp versions available. If you don't like the inconvenience, look at the description of the show and hopefully there will be some links in there. 
Oh crap, the phone's ringing. I guess that's all the announcements I can do. Hello? Yeah, probably. Hi, Christine. Oh, yes? Hey, it's uh, Gary from the post office. Gary from the post office? Yes. Okay. And, um, well, they, they wanted me to give you a call and just ask if you could stop putting those stickers on your letters that uh, say postmen eat bugs. That what, sorry? Oh, can you just please stop putting those stickers on your letters, please? It's what up, stickers? It's upsetting some of the male carriers. I don't know what you're talking about. And the female carriers. You keep putting stickers on the back of your letters that say postmen eat bugs. That's not even true. It doesn't even make sense. Who is this? Uh, this is Gary from the post office. You just can't be... I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it's, it seems like you're getting a little bit huffy with me. So it sounds like I don't you're, know what you're... You, you're being kind of guilty. You're getting all huffy puffy. So, uh, yeah, just please don't do that anymore, okay? That's upsetting the... Ah, crud, we lost her. I'm not allowed to call people huffy puffy up there in Canada, apparently. I'm calling off of a list that Timmy sent to me. A while back, I've already called off of this list. I've got some numbers crossed out already. I can't remember what I did. And I'm not going to do this the whole time. I just thought it'd be fun to do some more Postman Eat Bug stickers. Mainly because I actually ordered some stickers designed by Nick Caesar a year or two ago that say Postman Eat Bugs. And I've been putting them on all the things I send out. Oh, hello, Kathy. Oh, hello? Kathy? I thought I heard Kathy say hello. It's Gary from the post office. Kathy? All right, maybe I imagined that. Did I imagine that? Did she really say hello? Hello? Hi, Hannah. I mean, I, Hannah? This is Hannah. Hey, Hannah. It's Gary from the post office. Oh, hello? Hey, uh, my supervisors want me to call up, call you up and just ask you to stop putting those stickers on your letter. That's defaming the, Which? the postal carriers. Which stickers, sorry? Oh, you keep putting stickers on your letters that say postman eat bugs? And, and uh, you know, it's, it's not even true. It doesn't even make sense. Is the Sorry, main... I keep putting stickers on what? Uh, on all the letters that you send, send out with the, you know, in the mail. I've never sent out, I don't send letters out. Well, bills or something. Any, no, anytime you, I, anything I don't... is outgoing at your... At your place, there's always a sticker on the back that says Postman Eat Bugs. It says what, sorry? Uh, Postman Eat Bugs. I have no idea what that even means. Yeah, it's not even a true statement. Like, we don't eat bugs. That's weird. Like, why would we even do that? We're not We're not jungle people. Yeah, I, I've never, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay, well, you know, you don't have to pretend that you didn't do it. Just please stop doing it. Stop writing Postman Eat Bugs on the back of all your letters. What the fuck? I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't send letters. Wow, the mouth on Hannah. I thought I had the wrong name at first, but then I realized I did have the right name. And maybe the people on this list are just a little bit too young to be accusing them of using the post office for any reason at all. Because who does that anymore? It's 2022. Hello? Hi, Irina? Yes? Uh, this is Gary from the post office here in... Hi. Hi. Uh, they wanted me to let you know that they're going to be taking your mailbox off of your house and just take it in for, uh, sanitation. Because it's kind of gross. My mailbox? Yeah, your mailbox. So they're going to be taking that and, uh, they'll return it in just a few days. Uh, it's just going to be sanitized. I'm going to pull in right now. What's wrong with my mailbox? Uh, you know, just it kind of looks like a hobo mailbox. Like it's uh, very, very unclean and uh, just, you know, looks like it belongs on a haunted house or something. Excuse me? Well, that, that's just the notes that I have here. It's not me saying it. It's the notes. So they're going to they're gonna come and just remove your mailbox and they'll bring it back uh, hopefully a day later. Uh, no, that's not necessary to remove anything, actually. It's our property. I'm not sure why. You know what? I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to look at the mailbox right now. We have two mailboxes on our property. You guys gave us a hard time for the mailbox that was on our property and has been here for the last 15 years that we've been living oh, here. Oh, that's the problem. 15 years. It's so ugly and old. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. 
before you become a prick with me Whoa, and hey. start putting down things that are on my property, just be quiet for a moment, please. Number one. Yes, ma'am. Number two, there's a brand new mailbox on the property. So unless this is some kind of joke, there's a brand new box on the property. And I haven't had an issue with mail being delivered to my property since. So I don't know what the post office's problem is or the person delivering my mail. Okay, you're, you're kind of taking so this personally, ma'am. We're just going to come and yeah, take your mailbox and clean it. You don't it's... need to take anything off my property and clean nothing. And you're telling me it belongs, looks like it belongs in a haunted house. It's a friggin' step two, brand new, just bought. Right. It's just so what are you your, guys talking about? Your mail carrier is afraid they're going to catch a disease from touching it or something. Really? Then you know what? You guys can hold my mail up there because this mail carrier has caused nothing but headaches on this Ma'am, on don't, this yeah. road. don't be like that. Okay? You know, they're, they're doing their best. Yeah. 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 I understand. But so are we. So you know what? If you want something done, you don't call a homeowner and insult anything for that matter. Number one. Number I didn't two, say you were no a homeowner. Take... I said homeowner. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, and those notes that somebody wrote doesn't look like a haunted house to me because I'll post pictures, frankly, and I'll see what everybody else in town thinks of my mailbox, okay? So I don't know what the problem is because it's a brand new freaking mailbox, and if the princess of uh, the freaking carrier thinks that she's going to catch something when they don't even put anything inside by their hand, and they put it in with a friggin' extension. So I don't know. Okay. And I don't know how you guys even have my phone number. Oh, we have all but the anyway, phone numbers. You're gonna hold we have on. A database. You're gonna hold on a minute. I'm gonna t- check my mailbox. The mail carrier is probably and just I'm mad that you're pictures. putting those postman eat bug stickers on all your letters. You shouldn't. You should, probably shouldn't do that. Hey, what? I don't even think she heard me say all of that. I think she's just angry that I was interrupting. After I gave her a really long time to yell at me, she just yelled and yelled and yelled at me. I was very quiet, but as soon as I start interrupting, she's going to hang up. I wonder how she would react if I called her and told her it was just a prank call. Like, you got all mad at me and I'm just a prank caller. But I won't do that, I guess. There's always someone that gets mad at me when I admit that it's a prank. And what does she mean that they put the mail into the box with an extension? I'm looking on Google image search for that, trying to understand what an extension is, and I don't see anything like that. I just see the postman carrying around mail, holding it in their hands like they do here in America. What the fuck is an extension? Someone please explain that to me. Do they have those little robot hand stick things, and they put them into your mailbox one at a time with those? Hello. Hey, Mark? Yeah. Hey there, it's uh, Steve Day from the post office. Okay. And uh, I needed to let you know, they're going to be uh, the postal carrier. He's just going to be leaving your mail on the ground from now on, but he's going to put a rock on top of it so the mail doesn't blow away. Oh, you mean for the back door? Oh, no, just uh, just all your mail. He's just going to set it in the grass next to the sidewalk, and he'll put a rock on, oh. on top of it so it doesn't fly away. Why? I'm sorry, what? Why? Oh, he says your mailbox smells bad. You didn't hear that part? Uh, no. Oh, okay, yeah, your mailbox smells really bad. He says it reeks. Um, we don't have a mailbox. What do you have? A P.O. box. Oh, shit. Right? I guess it's us that reeks, then. <laughs> Is he talking about the post office box that's in the post office? Yeah, it's pissing him off. And he says, you know what? I'm not going to deliver mail there anymore. I'm just going to throw it out in the yard and put a rock on it. Because that, that <laughs> Kia box smells really bad. <laughs> the box smells really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gl- I'm glad you're getting a laugh out of this, Mark. <laughs> I sure am. That's fucking funny. You ruined my prank call. <laughs> I sure did. God damn it, Mark. All right, look, I got to go. I got lots of other customers to call. All right, cool. All right, love you. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Well, that sucked. I guess a lot of these people are out in the boonies because that's the second time that's happened that somebody's like, oh, I get my mail at a P.O. box. So you can't be talking about me. Good afternoon, studios. Hi, is this Jennifer? Yes, it is. Hey there, it's Steve Day from the post office. Hi. Hi. 
Um, I they want me to let you know that uh, your neighborhood's getting a new mail carrier that's going to deliver your mail. Oh, okay. And he's disabled, so you're going to have to put a wheelchair ramp on the front of your house so you can get up there. Everybody in our neighborhood has to in install wheelchair ramps? Yes, yeah, and if they want mail anyway. So, uh, yeah, if you could do that, uh, you know, he's just going to he's gonna be starting uh, next Wednesday. Is this a joke? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't kid about that. Um, disabilities are not a joke, ma'am. No, it's not a joke. Disabilities aren't a joke at all, but you're... You expect us to build a wheelchair ramp by next Wednesday or we're not going to get our meal anymore? Well, you don't have to build it yourself. Uh, you know, you can you can buy one from, I guess, a hardware store maybe. Or uh, how do, you can probably order order one online. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need, like, some some specifics in writing for this. Oh, we sent... Not just a phone call saying we need a wheelchair ramp by next Wednesday. Okay, well, we sent out a letter. Did you get the letter? We sent that about two months ago. No, oh. I did not. Okay, well, you know, just uh, just to be respectful of your, your new uh, disabled postman, you're going to need to put those wheelchair ramps on the front of your house. Or, you know, just one. One per house. So, my house is on a slope. Is there somebody I could get? One second, please. One second. Yeah, tell that, that thing to shut up. I'm going to need more information than this. Like, that's uh, that's a huge expense. Like, can I pick my mail ma my mail up at the post office from now on? Oh yeah, if you want to, but just you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not the biggest expense. Uh, probably, you know, it's not as bad as being in a wheelchair, I guess. I'm having a really, really hard time believing that you're really serious about this. The way you're approaching this conversation. Oh, I'm Is sorry. This a joke? I, oh no, I wouldn't get about this, ma'am. Uh, I know this, this is like, yeah, no kidding. In the grand scheme of things. It's it's not. What's your last name? Zerbel. Can I get some information about you? Sure. Yeah. Or do, I could put my supervisor on. I just. I, I mean, most people are just like, okay, there's a disabled postman. I guess we'll put a ramp up. They they don't get you mad. Think but, I'm, being I'm being difficult about somebody's disability. Well, it seems like you're being very angry that your postman is disabled. I'm. No, I'm not angry that my postman is disabled. I think it's fantastic that you've hired somebody who's disabled. I think that the process to just drop an expect my house is on an incline mm -hmm. like a huge huge incline yeah well he's got there, strong there, arms there's no there's no way that going to the hardware store between now and next wednesday and simply picking up a ramp to accommodate this request is feasible whatsoever like i'm on a huge incline ma'am like, that that's your own I, fault I, for buying a house on a huge incline you should have known this was going to be, be a problem in the future I'm really going to need to like, speak what, to your what, supervisor. What if, what if, God forbid, I'm you really end up in a wheelchair? Need, Are you going to be like, really oh, I guess I can never, I can right never, now. I can never leave the house again because there's a big incline out there. Guess I'm stuck indoors forever. I need to speak to your supervisor. Okay, I can put Carol on if you'd like to hold. Thanks. Uh, just a minute, please. Please wait. Your call is being transferred to the next available agent. Hello, this is Carol. Can I help you? Hi, Carol. My name is Jennifer. What's your last name? Uh, this is Carol Gersperms here at the post office. Could you could you spell that, please? Uh, here, uh, yes, uh, it's a T H A T. Ma'am, can you tell that yeah. that that thing in the background just to hush up, please? Okay, you need to go fuck yourself right now. Well, no, Goodbye. I can't hear you over over that thing. At least I said hush up. I didn't say shut the fuck up, right? That was nice of me. You'd think she could appreciate that. But man, it's hard to get people to believe that you're actually wanting a wheelchair ramp on the front of their house. Maybe it's just because I'm calling Canada and their houses are all on giant inclines. And you know what? I'm going to look at her house right now on Google Maps to see what kind of incline this is. Oh, this isn't that bad. I mean, yeah, the wheelchair ramp would definitely completely take over their entire front yard and everything. But I think they could make it happen if they really cared about disabled people. Like, really, there's a driveway all the way up to the house. It's paved. It's an asphalt driveway that's in pretty good condition. And then you get up there to the steps, and there's just three steps up to the door. And the mailbox is right at the top of those three steps. And I wonder if a postman in Canada could use an extension to put the mail up in that box. 
I still don't know what an extension is, but that lady before, the one with the haunted mailbox, she insisted that there was something called an extension the postman put the mail into the box with. But maybe I just misunderstood that. But you know what? Now that I look closer at this lady's house, this isn't going to be any inconvenience for her at all. I mean, they'll have to walk down a ramp from now on, that's true. Jennifer's just being silly. And oh yeah, I picked the wrong hold music. I just cleaned up all the audio on my soundboard recently. Like, got all the levels right, so I can use all of the hold musics now. And I was trying to do one that I haven't used in a while, and I ended up picking Wesley Willis. And he was about to start talking about cheetah's dicks and stuff. I think one of my favorites, and this is what I meant to hit, is this one. And I don't remember who sent it to me, but it's got a bunch of porn in it. But I don't know what this background music is, but I love it. I've definitely got to use that one of these days so that I can get instantly hung up on. Hello? Hi, Diana. Hi, yes? Hey there, it's, it's Steve Dave from the post office here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I needed to let you know you're going to be getting a new mail carrier, and you're going to have to get a wheelchair ramp on the front of your house because he's disabled. Why would I need a wheelchair ramp? So he can get up there and, you know, deliver your mail. So uh, he's going to be starting next Monday, not this coming Monday, but the Monday after. So if you could just get a wheelchair ramp all set up by then. So you can I don't know who, why, why would an individual house need to have a wheelchair ramp? Uh, so the postman can get up there and deliver the mail. I don't have, he doesn't deliver the mail to my house. He delivers it to a box. Well, what about when there's a package? Well, I'm not putting up a ramp for, he can't, that's ridiculous. Why would I have to put up a ramp? He can get right to my door almost without a ramp. Are you trying to say that it's ridiculous that our postal carrier has a disability? Because that is not nice. No, I'm not. I am not saying that. I'm saying it's ridiculous that the government thinks that I'm going to spend money and put a ramp in at my own cost. Yes, I do think that's ridiculous. So you can tell the government that if they want us to do that for disabilities, that is fine. But I am not paying for it. Are you crazy? Well, you know, we all, we, we're all in this together. You know, if you want to get your mail and your box. Here, you can talk to my husband. Okay. The post office. They want us to put a ramp in for our mail carriers. What are you talking about? Oh, there, there's just a l- little bit of a step there on the front of your house, and you're, you're going to need to put a ramp uh, up there so the postman can get up there to deliver boxes. You're, you're insane. Why do you say that? I mean, I am well, not the one freaking out. And saying that I hate disabled people like your wife. No, no, that's not what she was saying at all. No, no, that's but well, that's the, how it came I mean, across to me. No, no, but I mean, there's like a a three inch step, a three inch step, and then you're at our our mailbox. Yeah, yeah, it'll be an easy uh, thing uh, to build a ramp on. Like it won't even cost well, that much money. That. Like we're not doing that. Even though no. your wife's the cheapskate, you can do this for probably under fifty dollars. I would assume. Who, who, who are you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from the post office here in Canada Post. Yes. Yeah. No, hey, you, you tell no, that no, wife no, of yours no. in the background just to shut the fuck up, please. Well, obviously, you know that's not where you're work calling from because uh, uh, what's your what's your name? I'm sorry, she's got me all riled up. This is Steve Dave. What's Dave. your name? I already said this is Steve Dave. Steve Dave. Yeah. And you work for Can- you work for Canada Post. Correct. And what what prompted this phone call? Well, you just, you know, you're getting a new mail carrier. Uh, your wife should have explained all this before she handed the phone over. What a dummy. Well, uh, yeah, but, uh, I mean, like, w- once once every couple of months we get a package delivered to our house, our mail goes to a super box down the street. So I don't really see what the issue is there. That's... Well, just, you know, for just certain types of packages and stuff, there, there's, you got to have that wheelchair ramp. Well, so are you calling everybody on my street? Yeah, yeah, you're acting like you're being singled out or something. But no, everyone's got to have a wheelchair ramp. Well, I'm not doing it. Oh, uh, yes, you will. Protection. No, let's, no let's, I won't. Well, the postman... He, he, you, can send me some, you send me something in writing that says that. He's just going to throw I'll the box out in your call. yard then, out in the middle of your yard. It'll probably get rained on. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's fine. You, you well, tell her to hush that it. Happens, tell, tell that lady in the background to zip it. No, you, you are so unprofessional, it's, it's not even funny. Uh, who's your supervisor, please? Uh, Carol Gersperms. Carol what, sorry? Gersperms, common spelling. 
Well, so, it's not that common name, so you got to spell it for me. Oh, no, just look it up. E- look it up on the internet. It's German. Are you, sorry? I, I don't even know how to spell it, to be honest. Not off your name again? Uh, my your name, name again? My name's Steve Dave. For the third time. Steve Dave. Fourth time, if we count with your wife when she asked me. Wow. Well, you're you're perfect for Friday afternoon, Steve Dave. And you're and you're the. Do you what have a phone mean? number for your supervisor? What, what does that do you mean? Have a phone I'm number for your supervisor for a Friday afternoon. You, you have a phone number for your supervisor? Yes, it's on your caller ID. Just call that number. Uh, no, she's usually no, the one who picks it. up here. Up. All the, showing up as post office. Yeah, you gotta you gotta look. You know, click on that one. It'll show you the phone number too. Yeah, are you telling me you're not gonna give me your phone number? Well, no, I'll give it to you if you really want it. Please do. Don't be a weirdo yeah. about it. That's a seven. Eight three. All right, and you know it's it's just a wheelchair ramp. It's just for the disabled mailbox, mail, mail postal carrier. That's all. Well, not the, that big of a deal. Building a ramp isn't going to help because somebody that's disabled isn't going to be able to reach your mailbox. If they're in a wheelchair, they wouldn't be able to reach it. Yeah, they they've got extend extensions, extenders. They've got those little robot arms. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. that's fine. Tell her to all shut right. up. I, Tell I, her to I, hush it there in the background. Listen, you need to shut your fucking mouth. This is ridiculous. You're, you're rude, unprofessional, and, and, and just over the top. Sir, don't be just, cursing at me. No. You're the one, you started that, not me. You started that. Yeah, okay, well now you're acting like you're in grade school. Like, he started it, like right. you're, you're telling on me. You're going to get me grounded. Man, it took me like four times telling the wife to hush up before he finally cursed at me. And did you guys hear that? He said it said post office on my caller ID. So that name thing seems to be working all the time. I can't believe I haven't been using that for years now. I just put in a random phone number today. I didn't use my own phone number, but it actually works. Hello? Hi, Heather. Yeah. It's Steve Dave from the post office here. Yeah. Uh, I needed to let you know um, you're getting a new postal carrier, and uh, he's vision impaired. And you're just going to need to get some uh, Braille to put on your mailbox. Pardon me? Uh, Braille lettering uh, to put on your mailbox so that the postal carrier can find your home and know that he's at the right place to, uh, you know, drop your letters into. I don't have a mailbox. Well, you know what I mean, just your house number so he can actually find your house and everything. Cause sometimes I don't have a mailbox on my house. But sometimes you have packages and they have to come up to the door. You gotta have the braille. Hey, <laughs> I tried that one several times and it was not working out. The braille thing. Actually, most of the stuff I've tried today hasn't worked out. That dumb postman eat bugs stickers idea of mine. Like nobody believed that. They thought I was just kidding around and wouldn't take me seriously. So I deleted those calls. But I think I'm done with calls today because I'm done with this list that Timmy sent to me. Thanks for that, Timmy. I've called every single number on your list and I'm now deleting your list. Thanks for sending that in. That's it, everybody. The show's over. Here are some voicemails. Hey, Brad. Call me Texas calling in. Hey. I was just calling to say that shitbradsays.com is a very useful tool because, you know, contrary to the name, it can be used for things that, you know, that are said by someone who isn't Brad. Because, you know, I was oh, trying, crap. you know, the one uh, rapper. Crap, you just found a loophole in Synthhead system. Rapper some song. Uh, Synthhead, this guy's a hacker. References Home Alone, where he says, uh, building traps, so well attended. This is my house. And I have to defend it. I have to defend it. I couldn't remember the name of that song, so I used shitbradsays.com, typed in, this is my house, I have to defend it, and what do you know? It's crazy. There there was the song, so, uh... Can you believe it? go use the website. Fucking technology. It's so amazing. Hey, Brad. Hey. It's Benito. Hey. So, hey. I saw that, you know, you responded to my Tostino's, Totino's, you know, debate article in an unfavorable way. Debate article? It's not very cool on your part, man. I mean, let's just be honest here. You just can't talk correctly. I, I got a it's name true. change. Apparently, I can't choose a name. I shouldn't be doing podcasting. I don't disagree with you. This doesn't mean you got to slander my name like that, man. You know what? Just just hang up the phone. Sorry. Erase his voicemail, and just, just, you know what? Let's just, let's just go on about our days, man. Finito, away. Okay, bye.
Sorry that I slandered you. I'm just kind of a dick. It's not my fault. Hey, Brad, it's Matt from Matt. Hey. I don't know who's watching or listening to episode 750. And around the uh, 2606 mark uh, in the video, it looks like you ate shit on your bike. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Calm down. And then at 2909, you showed us pictures. <laughs> yep. I'm going to stop playing that video. Too bad you didn't bleed, bitch! Wow. No, I'm just glad you're alright. Okay. Because I'd cry if you were dead. I feel bad now, though, so thanks a I lot. I love you. And you know what? I didn't totally think I was going to make that. Wasn't I riding along boards that were underwater that I couldn't see? I knew it was going to happen if I slipped off that board. Hey, Brad, it's Schmeagle. Hey. Okay, it- Snowplow Show episode 462 mm-hmm. at the one twenty four forty eight mark. Okay. You play a clogged toilet sound effect on a Will It Flush episode. I was wondering if you could use that sound effect more. It's awesome. Okay. Thanks, Brad. Love you. Bye. I don't want to go look it up, though. And I've... I mean, are you talking about this one? Standard flush sound that a listener sent to me. And it does clog at the end. Are you talking about that one that I use a lot? Or is there some other one that I've forgotten about? Hey, Brad, calling here from uh, Deborah's phone again. Hey. Hey, I listened to that huge uh, thing you guys had on the... The huge prank call you guys pulled off like seven years ago with Carlito and everything on the... Uh, I think it's Madhouse Forever channel. Uh, they're really... The big one where we did Comcast, long story short, like you... All the other guys like pretty much team up on this guy that was like a recovering alcoholic. I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, I, I know the channel that you're talking about, so maybe I need to go over there and find that prank call and listen like to it. Say, he should like go back to drinking and whatnot because he was like taking stuff out of proportion. I don't know. That was that was pretty crazy. You guys pulled that off with everyone. So that was yeah. Congrats on that. I believe but you. Also, I listened to the most recent Snowplow show, and um, it, just, I don't, it always gets under my skin with these. Like not, not just women, but like everyone, you know, like the woman that was like, oh, yeah, this is very inappropriate. Don't be calling me like that. And I was wondering if you'd ever, like five or ten minutes later, called back as um as Carol and then revealed for the voice changer, like, I'm actually just me again. Ha <laughs> I got you. You just kind of rile them up more because, mm. I don't know, the people that are like always like never t- take everything so seriously. Okay, bye. And I think I have done that. I've called people back as Carol and let them know that I'm a man. Haven't I? I'm pretty sure I have. So I'm looking on the Madhouse Forever YouTube channel right now, and I don't see anything that mentions my name. Maybe it's this one that's like an hour long, an hour and 40 minutes long. That's the most recent one, and this voicemail was left for me two days ago. Now I'm not going to sit here and listen to an hour and 40 minutes of prank calls, and I just skimmed through the whole thing. I don't hear myself. Maybe he meant the video before this. But anyway, go over to Madhouse Forever on YouTube. And listen to old Madhouse stuff. It's still being updated very frequently. The most recent post was from three days ago. It looks like he posts at least a few times a month. I forget who runs this, but it's pretty great hearing all these old Madhouse calls. And that reminds me, I need to finish up the Madhouse shows that I haven't posted yet. Hey, Brad. Dave Montgomery from Australia. Hey, Dave. I'm still alive. Calm down. You're still got your show. Yep. You, um, you are not friend of me on Facebook, so I don't know what you're up to these days, apart from... Uh, I'll tell you what I'm up to. I've stopped posting on Facebook, so you're not missing anything at all. It's nothing personal. I unfriended like 2,000 people on Facebook. People are still yelling at me about it. Cat died, so um, commiserations about your cat. Oh, thanks. My, um, I still got some sort of relationship with my kids. What? Um, they've all finished uh, high school. Oh, that's nice. Um, two of them are at university. What are you doing? Uh, I'm still with my wife. Okay, yay, I, um, congratulations. And I can't really wait till you do a hang up the phone show. Kind of bragging, aren't you? Man, every voicemail in here is so long, and it's because in the last one, I was only playing the short voicemails. So now I'm just left with a bunch of really long voicemails. Hey, Brad, it's Cody from Texas. Like this one from Cody. It's been a while since I've uh, called in, but I just had to after the last episode I listened to. Oh, man, I think it had everything. It, it was just like you had the... Way calls, I think you. convenience stores. This is from uh, April 14th. So I don't remember what I did. I think that's the one from before Easter. You got some pretty good reactions. I think it even ended with somebody getting butt slammed, and they were not happy at all about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was just, mwah. Was I don't good. remember any of this, but I believe you. It was pretty great. A thing that I was that I thought of when as you were doing it, uh, 
was the HOA calls, getting people like the secret meeting. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you brought that back. Because oh, the one time you did it before... I did that just because somebody asked me to. Maybe it was you. You somehow overheard like a conversation between them talking about like how there's a conspiracy. Like it was so... It was one of your most perfect calls. Because you got a three-way mm-hmm. call or something. Somehow you heard... The, Probably they just hung up improperly like they always do. These, these people like asking about why there's a conspiracy against them and it was beautiful anyways i hope to uh hear, hear that again or uh I don't, I don't know where it is but maybe somebody else does or maybe you should use shitbradsays.com and search for phrases that you remember uh, if somebody can even figure out what episode that was i would love to hear that again uh that would be great thanks bye somebody go search for the word conspiracy on shitbrad says and then leave a voicemail tell us where it is yo brad Lion two two seven calling you from the boy at the bottom of YouTube. What's up, man? Uh, Hi, Pennsylvania. Yo, there's this. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever watched the Cosby Show. Remember that back in the day? Yeah, I guess. Uh, Theo and uh, Theo Huxtable. And Those Reed were the days. And that's all that shit. Anyway, there's this uh, episode. It's season five, episode five, and the one daughter uh, is she's waiting for a phone call. She's you know, she's in high school. And the daughter stuff. of the rapist. Oh. And she's waiting for a phone call from a dude named Roy in her class. What? And the dude Roy is like, the whole episode, it's so funny because it's all centered around that. It's like, oh, this, oh gee, Roy's going to call. And at one point, Theo has Huxable. Uh, he's like, he's like, the dad's like, you know, Bill Cosby's like, what's going on with her? What's her problem? And, and, and the CEO's like, I don't know, something about Roy and the phone. And uh, dude, they talk about Roy. And I am the- not going to watch the Cosby show. You know what? I didn't really watch that in the 80s or the 90s. And I'm not going to watch it today, and, and probably. And show Roy. And it, he looks nothing like you. Ah, shit. It, 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 it's just a funny fucking episode, man. Check it out. That was uh, the best part about it, that he looked nothing like me. Uh, Cosby Show, episode five, season five. And okay. this is the Lion 227 calling you from the bottom of YouTube. All right, bye. Everyone go watch the Cosby Show. It's good, clean, fun, really good values and everything on that show. Lots of good role models to watch in that old show. Hey, it's Sephiris again. Uh, hey. The bones my meat guy. Uh, so I was trying to pitch this idea of Dwight. Uh, from the Dwight the, the janitor show, but I, I can't get a hold of him. Oh, okay. But you should call. So they're just like, I can't show it to the show that I really want to show it to. So I guess I'm stuck just giving this to Brad. Hotels and tell them whatever that you are making a rage room inside of their hotel room. Okay. Uh, a rage room. Yeah, just just a fun little premise. Someday when I start doing a bunch of hotel calls, I'm gonna be like, you know what I'm doing front desk. I'm making a rage room inside of my hotel hey, room. Hey, Brad, call me Texas calling in. Hey. I was just calling in. Wait, no, you already you already had a voicemail on this episode. You can have one on the next episode. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Randall from Paraland, Texas. Hey, Randall. I was calling. Um, hopefully, Brad hasn't been listening too much to Beverly and been annoyed by this, but... A nope. uh, fun little thing I like to do now is when telemarketers or mostly Indian scammers are calling me, I like to merge Beverly's number onto the phone call. What a crazy idea. Let Beverly talk to the scammers. And sometimes it's gold. Sometimes they just hang up right away. But yeah. It usually doesn't disappoint. But you know what? When they're talking to Beverly, they're not scamming anybody else. So hell yeah, do that. Do that all the time. That's what a lot of people do with the Beverly number, is they just connect her to telemarketers. And I don't listen to Beverly as much as I used to, but all the calls are recorded, so someday it might turn up in something, some of these telemarketer calls that you've done. I think that's it for the voicemails and for the show. So thank you everybody for listening, and thank you to the sponsors of today's show, like I Regret Jumping, Colby C, Teen Wolf Jesus, Mike B, and Climatiz. I'm ending today's show with a song that was sent in to me by Mr. Wonderful. He submitted it to me as hold music, but come on, am I ever going to do that? Probably not, but the song's not bad. So here is a song by Muck Sticky. It's called Fuck Off. It's apparently from 2016. Yo, this is for anybody who needs to tell somebody to fuck off.